Hello lads, last season those of unspecified gender, I'm the Irish man here, and I just, before getting into the video, want to say I had other things to do than this. Second video on the channel, I wanted to be like what it's saying, it's Captain Tales. I was in the process of making What If Frieza, like, trained a lot more, but whatever, here we go. What if Goku became the Guardian of Earth? Part 2. This story begins five years after the defeat of Piccolo Jr., or half a year after the ending of the last part. Tien and Goku have reinstilled their rivalship, and they have both been training to surpass each other. Goku has a small lead because he's a Saiyan, meaning he has more potential, but Tien is training harder, trying to close that gap, and he's doing a pretty good job. But one day, a few days, like I said, before the five-year anniversary of the defeat of Piccolo Jr., a boy around the same height as Goku when he first started his adventure with Bulma arrives on the lookout. Goku would ask who he is, and the kid would say, I am the son of Demon King Piccolo Jr. My name is Son Gohan. G -G gohan before Goku can say any more, Gohan sends compressed energy blasts, sending Goku back tens of feet. Goku catches himself mid-air, but then Gohan launches a barrage of blasts, making smoke fill up the area. As the smoke clears, Goku is revealed, standing there in Kaioken times 5. Alright kid, are you done? Uh, how? <laughs> Let's play go! Gohan stands there, seemingly very happy he just committed murder, but then he feels someone grab his shoulder. Before he has time to do anything or react, he is then teleported into a room where there is nothing but white light and a palace. The palace has a door which he thinks he might be able to escape the room if he opens and gets out of, but as he runs toward the door, it disappears. He has no idea what just happened, but then he hears a voice echo around the room. So your name's Go? Huh, funny. That's the same as my grandpa. He's one of the best martial arts masters, taught me everything I know. Gohan, seeing the giant shadowy figure of Goku, will go and try to launch a fist at it, but it doesn't work. He phases through it, and he just kind of looks bamboozled. Sorry, kiddo, but that's not gonna work. I control everything here. Why don't you take a seat and tell me why you came up to my lookout and tried to attack me? You're a monster! You killed my grandpa, you beat up my dad, and now I'm here to get revenge! Goku would laugh at this, remembering who King Piccolo and Piccolo Jr. were, <clears throat> people who would slaughter the innocents just to get what they want. Goku would tell Gohan this, but he would just choose to believe that Goku's lying here. He has been told so many things that he doesn't know what to believe, but he chooses rather to believe the person he looks at as his father, being Piccolo, rather than Goku, just some random guy who is supposedly a monster. Goku would go into Gohan's mind looking to see what has happened to make him think that the Piccolos were just some saints who could do no wrong. Put your party hats on, people, because this is about to go into fanfiction territory, but only a little and only because I wanted Gohan to be in this story. A few years back, Goku would have blessed a woman with a child. Of course, he would bless Chi-Chi because she was the person who had asked him to marry her, and he had to say no. So he felt bad and decided to bless her with a kid. And then Piccolo Daimyo, or Piccolo Jr., I can't remember the names, would go and actually kidnap this child, seeing it as the kid of God and that that could be a good tool to use on killing Goku. Piccolo would then raise this kid, and eventually he would be old enough to where Piccolo thinks he could actually go and put up at least a challenge with Goku. And he knew Goku wouldn't kill the kid, so if he fails, he can just come back to Piccolo. Gohan would live a rough life of martial arts teachings and intense training, but this would get him up to a power level of 5,000 which is one of the strongest Earth has seen so far, but it's still nothing compared to Goku. Fanfiction time over, now back into stuff that makes sense. Goku wouldn't actually want to kill Gohan or let him go back to the life he was living, he would instead decide to change this kid. Goku would actually go 
down and greet Gohan as an actual person instead of the giant shadowy figurine. Goku would tell Gohan that if he were to let him out of the chamber now, he doesn't know what he'll do. Maybe Gohan will go and be like his quote-unquote father and grandfather and go and try to take over the world. And then, much like with them, Goku will have to stop them. And Goku would explain how, yes, he did kill King Piccolo, but only to protect the lives of the people on Earth. For the next four months, Goku would actually be teaching Gohan inside the time chamber, showing him how to be a good person, also training him to be stronger, and Gohan at first plans to use this strength to kill Goku and return to King Piccolo, or Piccolo Jr., but the more time goes on, he decides not to. He decides he would actually like to keep this father-son relationship he's building with Goku. By the end of the four months, Gohan has actually grown to love Goku and see him as the father he should have had. Once exiting the room of spirit in time, Goku would bring Gohan down to Earth and more specifically to the home of Ox King and Chi Chi, who would look at Gohan and tell him that this is his actual mother and grandfather. This is his home. More than welcome to stay here, and these two are definitely willing to raise him. Chi Chi would walk into the room, seeing the two, and would burst into tears. Without a word being said, Chi Chi would run over and wrap Gohan in a hug. At first, Gohan would try to break down of him, but then he would accept it. Goku and Gohan's eyes would lock, and then Goku would disappear, leaving Gohan with an actual family. A few days would pass, and a mysterious ship would land on the planet, and Goku would draw it in, making it land on the lookout and it wouldn't do any damage because Goku would slow it down before it actually made impact. A man would step out of the spaceship and, oh my god, it's Sonic the Hedgehog? No, actually, it is Raditz, Goku's brother from space. Goku doesn't know that, but he does know he's a Saiyan. That's a change here from the original. He had spent time on King Kai's planet, and in one way or another, I believe this would get brought up. Raditz would look around using his scouter and would see that there's a lot of life on this planet, a lot of life, and he doesn't even question that Goku's dead because he's right there. So he would ask him, why hasn't he killed the inhabitants of this planet and sold it yet? Did he forget his mission or is he just being disobedient? And Goku would look at him thinking he's joking, but Raditz would keep a serious expression which would tell Goku he is not. Goku would tell Raditz that it's his sworn duty to protect the people of this planet, and no matter what Raditz thinks his purpose is, Goku's is not to kill people and go and sell planets. That's just not who he is, and if Raditz has a problem with that, well, Goku will solve that problem. Is that supposed to be a threat, brother? No, brother. That's a promise. Goku would flare up his key, and Raditz, seeing on his scouter, it would rise 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, and then it would explode. Goku would then lower his power back down and ask Raditz if he's still so sure about killing the inhabitants of this planet. Raditz, in shock and admittedly a little bit of fear, would only say two words. Super Saiyan. Goku is at awe. He has no idea what a Super Saiyan is, yet hearing it, it just sounds familiar. Little did Raditz know, a few other people had been listening in on their conversation, and the two that decide to speak up are Nappa and Vegeta. Vegeta would say that if the Super Saiyan is on Earth and Raditz has found them, then this could be their chance to beat Frieza, finally being out from under his control, and Raditz would agree, sending them the coordinates for Earth, and they would start their journey to the planet. Suspecting foul play, Goku would ask who he just called, raising his power up slightly, and Raditz would say not to worry that these are friends and that they have something that they need Goku's help with. Goku, still being cautious of his brother, would ask what they need, and he would say that there's someone who ruled over the Saiyans for far too long, and they were hoping to get Goku's help on taking him out. 
Don't worry, he's a horrible person and definitely deserves what's coming to him. King Kai would contact Goku, telling him that, yes, indeed, this Frieza guy is a bad person, but he doesn't think that Goku is strong enough to actually take him on on his own. Goku, now having had this been verified by King Kai, would agree to Raditz's proposal and would also tell him that he can't do it on his own and Raditz is really nothing to him right now. He would probably just get in the way. But with some training and some of his other allies, then yeah, they should be able to take Frieza on. One year passes and both of them have increased their power levels to 750,000. Raditz has learned the Kaioken up to times two, but has chosen not to focus on it seeing as far too straining on his body. At this suspected time, both Nappa and Vegeta land on the planet. 